Thanks for joining me for a quick demonstration of the Ag Studio Map mobile application for Map Shots. Ag Studio Map is a software that's designed for precision soil sampling utilizing the GPS on an iPad. Ag Studio Map integrates seamlessly with Field360 Studio to allow for the wireless exchange of work orders and soil sampling jobs. So whether you need to sample one field or 100, you have the ability to go out and perform wireless exchange of sampling work orders between your desktop and your iPad in the field. The first step in the process is to obviously download the Ag Studio Map app to your iPad. Once you open the Ag Studio Map app, you're going to be prompted to enter in your username and password. Go ahead and use your Incirca Pioneer username and password, but then also make sure that you use the URL address that was sent in the email from Incirca, which has the field360services.pioneer.com extension within that URL address. Once you've completed that, go ahead and log in. And what it's going to do is it's going to start downloading all the current jobs within Field360 that are work orders submitted to a lab, and they have to be in that submitted status. And those are the ones that are going to be cached down to the iPad so that you can go to the field and complete the last part of those work orders, which is pulling the soil sample points, getting those connected to what you created within Field360 Studio, and get those soil samples sent off to the lab. Once those results come back and those work orders are in a completed status, they will no longer synchronize down to the iPad. The key thing to make sure that you understand is that only those work orders that are in the submitted status of Field360 Studio are going to be the ones that sync down to the mobile app for use in the field. The first time that you log into the Ag Studio Map app, you're going to be prompted with a pop-up asking you if you want to allow GPS-enabled tracking of this device. Make sure that you choose Allow and you choose Always Allow so that this app will be enabled with the GPS that it needs to be able to function for you in the field at sampling time. As you can see here, I've now got my different growers for which I have submitted work orders within Field360 Studio. Now I can choose any one of those operations or multiple operations that I want to go ahead and get saved down and ready to go in the field for soil sampling. I'm just going to choose this one operation. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. It's going to show that the grower, when I click on that grower twice, it's going to get me down from the farm structure down to the field structure. And at that point, I can choose the field for which I'm going to go out and start sampling. If I click on that field, what you're going to see is the sample points that I've created. This is for pre-season nitrate soil sampling. So what you're seeing are points one and three. Points two and four are hidden behind points one and three because I'm pulling at the same site my zero to six inch and then my seven inch to 24 inch samples. Most of the buttons that you're gonna see on this mobile app are very user intuitive. You've got your plus and minus button in the upper top right, it allows you to zoom in and zoom out. But then, of course, it's an iPad, so you can use the pinch feature to be able to zoom in and zoom out using your fingers on the screen. The next button below is a button that allows you to center the map to your current location. I'm not going to do that because obviously I'm not at this field right now, so I'm going to go ahead and just let you experiment with that when you're out in the field. But that would allow you to center that map to your current location. And the button just below with the magnifying glass with the car inside when you activate that, it will turn blue. That will allow you to keep your current location at the center of the map. If we jump down to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, what you're going to see is a transparency layer. So if I click that, you can see that I can allow for transparency that I have on my view here at the field. I also have the ability to access grid tools. That's the four squares right here. When I activate that, it brings up a new set of tools and a new ribbon to where I can work within any GPS grid-based uh, sampling that I need to do. So there's features and function in there. I'm not going to dive into those details about how you can use that and how you can edit that grid, set up your serpentine process. Um, that's probably a feature we're not going to be using too much, but that is available if you want to explore those options. And more of those details are outlined in the user guide from MapShots. 
The next button here is a pencil that allows you to be able to go in and edit boundaries. We're not going to get into the edit boundaries or how you can drive the field to be able to create boundaries or how you can draw boundaries manually on the map, but those are all features that are available and could be used through this app. Again, probably not something we're going to be using too much for our purposes. And the final button there that you're going to see on the bottom left is the white circle. That's actually a slider button. What that allows you to do is complete the job. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. I'm going to hit cancel on that right now. I want to make sure to highlight the buttons so they're over on the bottom right. So the far right button is a gear. So you click on that and that's your settings button. So one of the key features in here is the sync. So you can see I've got sync up at the top. When I click sync, it's going to allow me, based on any work that I've done in that field, to be able to sync that job back to Field360 Studio. So you can imagine if you had multiple iPads or different people out doing sampling in the same field or different fields at the end of the day or the start of the day, you're going to want to make sure to use this sync process to be able to sync all that data that has changed, what's been collected, what's been completed, send that back to Studio as well as grab from Field360 Studio any new jobs that have entered into that submitted status and need to have soil samples taken in the field. So you'll see that within here. Uh, if you go ahead and click OK, what it's going to do is go ahead and synchronize. Obviously, I don't have anything to synchronize back to Studio, but it would begin the synchronization process of pulling any new submitted jobs into my view so that I have those ready to go and cache down to my iPad so that I can use those in the field. I'm just going to cancel out of that. The other icons you're going to see in that bottom right hand quarter include the turn off the directed sampling points. So uh, you can see I can click that button. It's just going to remove those sampling points to be able to remove those from the view. Uh, next to that is the turn off on the GPS cursor. So that is the blue dot that you would see on the screen. I'm not going to turn that on or turn it off because I'm not located at the field right now. But if you want to see that blue cursor and watch it follow you around the field so you can georeference where you're at, you can do that. And then the final icon there is the ability to change the map background imagery. If I click on that, I can make it just a road view, or I can go back and I can do aerial with labels or just my aerial view, but I've got the ability to do that. One key thing to mention and consider about this app is its ability to work in a non-connected status. So if you're out in the field, obviously you probably don't have Wi-Fi, maybe you don't have a cellular connection, now you've got the ability to still have the imagery out in the field because this works in a non-connected status. The thing to note is that in order to have the imagery that you may want and the resolution that you may want, you want to make sure that while you're in this connected status, you move around within this field and zoom in to the different areas so that you have cached down to your iPad that imagery, which now can be available when you're in a non-connected status. So that's something just to pay attention to. You're not going to be able to zoom in and be able to gain any additional clarity beyond what you've already done in a connected status, cash down to the iPad, so that when you're out in the field, if you're disconnected, now you have the ability to see that level of imagery just by capturing it like I'm doing here, by moving around this field and letting that view display on my iPad. I'm going to zoom back out on this field. And I'm going to talk about the last button that resides here on the map. So if I go out to this field, I've got obviously a lot of different icons that I can use to help georeference myself. But I'm going to drive out and I'm going to start at point one and two, which I got right here. So if I zoom in there and I get out to that point and I realize that there's 15 cow patties laying there and that is obviously not a good spot that I'm going to sample. I need to move to a more preferred spot. What I can do is go ahead and move that sample point using this app in the field. And then when I synchronize back, it will cache that information for that GPS coordinate back to studio. Now, once I start that process to where I need to relocate a point, I need to make sure that I'm using the mark tool to be able to mark every point after that. So it's sort of an all or one, all or one type of deal to where if you change this point and you mark it as somewhere else, the rest of the points, the subsequent points you're going to go to, you need to make sure to mark those, regardless of whether they're in the exact same spot that was previously determined when you created those points in Studio or not. So what you'll end up doing is clicking this big button in the bottom right that you can see in that imagery. It looks like an upside down teardrop with a bullseye target in the middle. When I click that, what it's going to do, and it's going to give me a warning here because I'm not close to the field, ask, ask me if I really want to sample this point. 
But if I was in the field, it would allow me to be able to go ahead and mark the point that I'm standing at, pull the sample, and then that redirects that GPS coordinate from where it was previously set as point one and two to my new point one and two. But when I move to my next spot in the field where I need to do my directed sampling, I'm going to navigate and get over to point three. I can pull directly at that spot, but I just need to make sure that I use that icon again to be able to mark that spot so that once I start that process, all subsequent ones need to make sure they follow that same process of marking that point. So just one of those features that's available to be able to use. And then when you need to use it, you need to make sure that uh, all subsequent points get that marked location using that feature within the X Studio Map app. So I'm going to cancel out of that. And basically, I've gone through and used the different features within here. Um, obviously, I didn't cover a lot of them, but the majority of what you would need to be able to go out and find your points, capture uh, the data from those points, and using this tool to do it in a disconnected or connected status is one of the key things that makes it pretty convenient. Plus, the ability to now be able to go back, click on my icon, click Sync, synchronize the work that I've done. I can do that again over a cellular connection or over Wi-Fi. Make sure you do that before they go to the field so you cash down all those currently new submitted jobs and you've got those ready to go for pulling points in the field. So that should about wrap it up. Make sure to use the Ag Studio user guide for any questions that you have. Hopefully this video was helpful and I wish you luck in the field. Thanks for all you do. Take care.